Hello everyone, welcome back to a brand new playlist. So I decided to make this playlist upon some various concepts in a VLSI. So that basically means, you know, very large scale integration circuits. So the first topic that we're going to be taking a look at in this playlist is the RC delay model. So I'm not going to go very much into the concept here. I'm just going to teach you what you need to know in order to solve the circuits and, you know, perfectly solve the math that are present in the RC delay model. So let's get started. Uh, some basic CMOS knowledge is, of course, you know, recommended before you begin this video, but still doesn't matter. Just, you know, just see how you get along. So the RC delay model concept is basically representing a transistor in terms of three capacitors, one resistor and one switch. OK, that's just it. That is the basic RC delay model concept. So here we have our common PMOS, you know, so the PMOS is co uh, connected to the power source here, VDD. So this is the source of the PMOS. So I'm just going to write. So this part is the source of our PMOS. This is the drain, which is connected to a ground. And this is the gate of our PMOS. So when we represent this PMOS in the RC delay model, the source is going to be connected to a capacitor. The drain is going to be connected to a capacitor, which is C2 here. And the gate is also going to be connected to a capacitor, which is C3 here. And we're also going to have a resistor and a switch connected in series. All right. So these two are the exact same thing. And uh, this is basically just the RC representation of the transistor. So the same thing can be said for the NMOS. Uh, remember that the NMOS has the drain um, on the upper side and the source on the lower side. Uh, it's the inverse of the PMOS. The gate is here as usual. And the representation of RC of an NMOS is exactly the same. You're going to have three capacitors connected to the ga gate uh, drain source and a resistor and a switch in series. So if you understand up to this much, then the next part shouldn't be that difficult at all. So yeah, that's just basically the same thing that I said uh, a few minutes ago. When you're going to be working on the math of the RC delay, you need to remember this concept here. The resistance of a PMOS is twice the resistance of an NMOS. I'm just going to repeat that. Get it into your head. The resistance of a PMOS is twice the resistance of a normal NMOS. It will have the same capacitance, but it will have twice the resistance. So another thing that we need to know is that resistance is inversely proportional to the width of a transistor. So what this basically means is that if we increase the width, then resistance of the transistor will decrease. All right. So if this increases, then the resistance will decrease. So as I mentioned before, that the PMOS has a higher resistance than the NMOS. So in order to make the PMOS resistance equal to the NMOS resistance, excuse my writing, I'm very bad at writing here like this on a laptop. So in order to make the PMOS resistance equal to the NMOS resistance, we need to increase the width of the PMOS. All right because we want to decrease the resistance of the PMOS, which is why we're going to increase the width. And this brings us to our final, you know, the final thing that we need to know. The width of a PMOS is twice the width of an NMOS. You need to understand the concept behind this, and you need to remember this, that the width of a PMOS is twice the width of an NMOS. So that was about it. And the only thing that we have left is the RC delay equation. RC, the RC delay equation is very simple. Width into resistance into, into capacitance. You're going to have to remember this too. And quick recap. So what we learned till now is that uh, PMOS and NMOS is represented like this. The width of a PMOS is twice that of an NMOS, and this is because the resistance of a PMOS is, uh, you know, a twice that of an NMOS. This is the RC delay equation. And finally, in order to calculate RC delay from a circuit, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to calculate the width of the transistors. 
and of the pull up and pull down network. So don't worry if you don't understand these yet. I'm going to be explaining them in the next video. And the next step is we're going to be calculating the delay by considering only the transistors that are directly connected to the output. You don't have to understand this now, but I would recommend, you know, noting this down for future reference in the videos that are going to be coming up. All right then, so you've started learning and I hope to see you soon in the next video.